symposium. We are um, honored to have with us today our chief guest, Mr. Mohammad Najibur Rahman, the former principal secretary to the Honorable Prime Minister and the chairman of the Bangladesh Capital Market Stabilization Fund, the distinguished keynote presenter, Dr. M. A. Baki Khalili, the professor and dean of the Department of Business Administration, University of the Asia Pacific. Um, Mr. Muhammad Arfan Ali, President and Managing Director of Bank Asia. Mr. Nasiruddin Ahmed, the first Vice President of the Bangladesh Insurance Association and the Vice Chairman of the Meghna Life Insurance Company Limited. Distinguished business leaders, friends from the print and electronic media, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, good afternoon to all of you. I would like to uh, welcome you all to the parallel session of Risk Financing Strategy of the National Symposium on Private Sector Participation and Leadership in Disaster Risk Management, <coughs> which is organized by uh, Dhaka Chamber, ActionAid, World Vision, Bangladesh, European Union, and United Purpose, Bangladesh. We're indeed thankful to the chief guest and all the esteemed uh, panelists, despite their busy schedule for gracing the occasion. As you know, the Dhaka Chamber is the country's vib most vibrant voice of the SMEs, uh, a family of 4,500 plus SMEs, and uh, diverse business members, which has been putting forward fact-based opinions and, uh, of course, prudent policy guidance uh, for um, improving the continuous uh, trade and investment development over the last six decades, uh, addressing the needs of today's business and the economy of tomorrow. So from that perspective, Dhaka Chamber has been working in tandem with the public sector and development agencies on various contemporary issues, economic matters and such, where um, you know that uh, our economy has marked 6% plus uh, average growth in the past decade, um, outshining many regional economies underpinned by the dynamic private sector, which uh, the Honorable Prime Minister always says that 82 to 85% of the country's economic growth driver is the resilient private sector. That is also our sincere thanks to the macroeconomic management of the government with policy incentives and supports. So from that perspective brings us to disaster, which has adverse impacts with cascading effects on various spheres of social and economic development. Predominantly, you know that Bangladesh is exposed to wide ranging disaster, holding back our economic expedition. So, of late, you know that the severity and frequency of natu natural disasters uh, has risen, uh, primarily uh, owing to the climate change. And you have seen that there has been nearly a calculation of $15 billion worth of economic losses in Bangladesh just from disaster alone. And extreme natural disasters, as I said, is something we have experienced over the last two and a half decades. The private sector is, as, as I said, considered the lifeline of the economy uh, due to its relentless efforts in employment generation. But at the same time, they bear the brunt of uh, disasters, impacts in terms of damage and losses almost everywhere in the world, as evidenced in recent disasters regions, in, including the Peckin tsunami of India in 2004. Uh, we've had the earthquake in Japan in 2004, Nepal earthquake which shattered their economy in 2015. And then we have the cyclone Ampan of 2020. However, Bangladesh has come a long way in minimizing the maximum risk. And of course, the government has also endorsed the Sendai framework of 2015 to 2030, uh, which interestingly, our, uh, the then principal secretary to the Honorable Prime Minister himself has been working on. So thanks to you, um, Honorable Chief Guest. And this is primarily for the interest of both the uh, private sector and the economy considering the impact and the management of disasters. So from that perspective, I believe that this is something we need to make the private sector aware. We have to give them the policy, perspe policy perspective, the policy incentives, and of course, uh, tax breaks. As you know that uh, if we talk about uh, two decades ago, we never thought our resilient private sector will be making unlimited investments in sustainability. But today, sustainability is a, not only a buzzword, it is a top priority for the largest earning uh, foreign exchange earning sector of this country, which is ready-made garments. Uh, they do not even wish to start a business before going green. And that is the impact. How has it uh, been possible in this country? Through policy support, through tax breaks, among many others. Now, Bangladesh Bank offers refinancing schemes, 
uh, for green products and uh, buildings at a reduced rate, which does not compensate the industries. Therefore, we must, uh, on the way forward, uh, find some institutional financing approaches to be mainstream for the best interest of sustainable development of the private sector. Similarly, when it comes to disaster financing, that should also be done. And I would also ask the regulators, unfortunately, uh, our, um, one of our representatives from Bangladesh Bank, the general manager, is um, stuck in traffic. He will be joining us. I will bring him into the discussion much later. And of course, uh, like I said, we need to um, urge the financial sector to improve catastrophe risk model with the help of private sector for easing risk assessment and financing process. So of course, before wrapping up, uh, this is just to give you a, a tone of the dialogue now. And um, I would like to thank all the esteemed guests on the panel, as well as all of you who have been here since the very early morning today. I thank you for your patient hearing and joining the occasion. And I believe the valued remarks of all the panelists. And if time permits, we may also open the floor with the permission of the chief guest um, that the uh, recommendations of the participants will enlighten us and help us this uh, super consortium that you know that the Echo Action Aid, Dhaka Chamber, United Purpose and World Vision, uh, the consortium will um, create an outcome paper and place it to the respective authorities on how we should proceed and be the example to the private sector that this, first, uh, this consortium is taken for the first time, actually the first time in South Asia, not only in Bangladesh. And we, ex we hope that uh, through this initiative uh, of the super consortium breaking the ice, many other private sector initiators will also take this process. So I thank you all once again for your patient sharing. And without further ado, I will now move into the role of the moderator. And then eventually we will hear from our today's chief guest for the event. I thank you all for your patient sharing. Thank you. Um, so at this point of time, we will request the uh, distinguished professor, uh, Dr. M.A. Baki Khalili, the professor and dean of the University of uh, Asia Pacific, to deliver his keynote address and to um, create a flow for the discussion of the today's session. Dr. M.A. Baki Khalili, ladies and gentlemen. Take us. Okay. Right. Yes. Okay, you got my uh, introduction, and uh, I was also a professor at the Department of Finance, University of Dhaka. So after retiring from the University of Dhaka, then I was heading a research institute, Korean Institute of Microfinance, and now after that, I am now with the. University of Asia Pacific. And um, Mr. Chairperson, Chief Guest, and distinguished panelists, and distinguished participants, good afternoon. I'll try to be brief, although there are some 33 slides, but I've been allocated a time of 20 minutes. So even looking, going through the panel, slides will take more. So let me just move on. Um, uh, this is the content that we'll be discussing, not focusing so much on what uh, in what sequence I'll be discussing. So the critical issue, why we are discussing this thing, you know, just I would like to introduce, it has been introduced already by the um, president of DCCI and we have heard in the morning session. So uh, Bangladesh is one of the most vulnerable countries in to natural disasters in the world. This is well known and it is the seventh um, seventh countries in the world that is prone to a disaster. And this economic loss, the estimates that we find from 2016 to 20, that it accounts, it ranges from 0 0.8 to some 1.1% of GDP. And it is increasing and it is, this estimation even during this 2007-2009, when Sidor and Ayla struck this country, this economic loss from those um, disasters were much higher in intensity. So, um, one of the um, 
important part is how to finance. There are two ways to go about it. One, that you adopt some preventive measures so that your intensity of economic loss from disaster is minimum. And second approach is that you make provision for financing this economic loss, disaster, arising from disaster. So we'll be basically talking about, today I'll be talking about this disaster risk financing with particular reference to Bangladesh. Two concepts that we need to separate, differentiate. One that was critically traditional, uh, previously we used to know, disaster risk reduction. This was about, this refers to probability of disease, reducing loss and damage to any disaster through preventive or mitigation and pre preparedness of possible impacts. Disaster risk management, which is now the buzzword and globally accepted, is much broader because it tells you about the approach to managing the disaster. So it brings the management perspective to this concept of disaster risk management. Uh, <clears throat> therefore, DRM includes all management perspective, including financial management. We will be focusing on. So what are the pillars? Since this constitutes this management perspectives, there are some process. So five pillars of disaster risk management because we need to understand this. So first pillar is risk identification, which for which you need quite extensive set of data. Risk reduction, what is strategies uh, you can adopt to avoid creation of new risk. Third is preparedness, that improved capacity that I just mentioned. And then financial, fourth pillar is financial protection. That financial protection is first, it is resilience of the households and farms against disaster and uh, through financial protection. And finally, the last pillar that I mentioned, it is the post-disaster financing of loss and damages. So I have, we have already mentioned that why disaster risk financing is important. As we mentioned that you need to, first it is part of the ARM, Second, that you need to have proper financial planning against loss and damage. Just you cannot um, solve this problem or address this intensity of loss and damage the, that we normally face um, without any financial planning. So it is critical in disaster risk financing, financial management, that financial plan takes place against this loss and damage. Secondly, disaster affects your livelihood and asset losses. It's both for the households and farms. Therefore, DRM aims at protecting livelihood and development, and second, increasing the financial resilience by impl implementing sustainable and cost-effective policies and operations. What are these? Principles before I talk about this, just we need to first that funding must be available timely. Whenever you need it, it must be available. Second thing, this is true given the intensity of loss and damages that causes caused by disaster, no single instrument or intervention can appear to be sufficient. So third principle is sources of risk finance and distribution of funds are equal, equally important. So on the one hand, you need to mobilize resources, but on the other hand, you have to ensure that this fund is distributed to the beneficiaries, the affected, disaster affected households and farms. Therefore, one, is, one important principle is access to information is important for sound financial decision. That is, that we have heard from the, and the previous session, from the inaugural session. 
So what are the risk financing instruments? Uh, one is market-based instruments. Generally, that takes place, you know, risk transfer, cap capacity building, etc. And uh, this risk transfer is basically transferring your potential risks to the insurance insurers, insurance companies. And um, so that is one, and you must one must develop the capability to cope with shock through improving access to finance and technology. Second type of instrument is contingency financing, that after a shock that there must be liquidity, a financial instrument that will provide liquidity immediately after the shock. Third is budgetary an instrument which is common in our country and almost every, almost not every developing, developed countries that budgetary allocation is made for facing disaster consequences. Bangladesh exposure to shock, um, ADB in 2016 estimated economic loss of 10.8 billion US dollar over the period 2000-2013. 10.8 billion dollar. And CEDAR alone in 2000, uh, CEDAR alone contributed to 1.7 billion. ILA contributed to some with a minimum consequence of 269 million US dollar. So with, over this time, government of Bangladesh um, has adopted a strategy, the consequences of cyclone that we faced in 1970, that intensity of loss and damage to property and life, we cannot conceive of that in intensity today in 2020-22 because of the strategies adopted by the government including the emergency shelter house and flow of information and at the same time now loss of livestock is also quite minimal because it now allows during the uh, cyclone uh, the households are allowed to take their livestock to the uh, shelter houses. Then um, I did, I with my colleagues in 2017 did a study on the consequences of Sidor and Isla, and we visited on that. So, I just mentioned that 10.8 billion dollar was economic loss during the period 2000-2013. How is it financed? Uh, the same study of ADB Ojaki 2016, you can see that basically funding for recovery and rehabilitation, humanitarian aid, and foreign aid for emergency. So from 2006 to 2010, nine, during these two period, to during that period, as I mentioned, two major disasters took place in Bangladesh, Sidor and Isla, and that is why, particularly Sidor, that is why you find a very peak in flow of foreign aid for emergency responses. But overall, there is a very low level of funding for re recovery and re So what is the, is the funding sufficient, the one that we sh showed in the previous graph? No, economic loss in 2000, 2013 was $10.79 billion. Total funding was $2.67 billion. So there is a funding gap of 8.12 US billion dollar. So that is a huge, it's roughly 80% of the economic loss that remain unfunded. So basically our approach to this financing disaster has been more limited to post-disaster uh, emergency funding and limited rehabilitation. And the same evidence we found in uh, our study in 2017, in, that was a national level uh, study, 
So of the poor households, what we found, that average loss was 30,000 taka for poor households, and including 15,000 loss for ho houses, property. And we visited these households after 10 years. I'm, to, I'm just trying to make the point, even with, I'm just trying to complement the findings from ADB study 2016, that we visited the households after almost 10 years. What we found, only 28% of cedar affected household could go back to pre-disaster state. Only 28 and 15% could not recover at all at 10 years after cedar. So that is, and the same thing with the lesser in intensity in case of Isla, 37% could fully recover to the pre-disaster level and 23% could not do. So you can understand from the simple statistics in case of 72%, 72, sorry, CEDAR, 72% could partly or could or not at all cope with this loss and damages. And in case of CEDAR, it was also, uh, it was like 60%, 60, 62%. So that takes, tells me about the need for disaster financing that how severe the situation is. So now the challenges, the, before I talk about the challenges and funding, so let us first take the disaster, what is the disaster risk ecosystem in Bangladesh. We have got government of Bangladesh that provides budgetary allocation, has created um, disaster trust fund, climate trust fund, climate resilience fund, green fund, and so on. Um, that is the role of the government. Insurance companies, though limited in this case, but still that is a part of that, and one of the important stakeholders and players in the disaster risk management in Bangladesh. Third is PKSF and microfinance institutions. Um, they are major players particularly financing these poor households and small enterprises affected by, the dis affected by disaster. And these institutions are not only playing the, not only supporting in post-disaster, but also in pre-disaster. So that is they are, and the regulators is another, that is IDRA, Bangladesh Bank, and VSEC, Securities and Exchange Commissions, they also par contribute to the process of formulating policies and binding the policies for the um, fourth is banks. Banks particularly, uh, Bangladesh Bank has been, has formulated policy for banks to support sustainable and green finance to reduce effects of climate change. And, uh, and uh, I know that these banks have been playing a critical role. And this financing sustainable, uh, providing sustainable and green funds, it is basically pre-disaster resilience across to potential loss and damages. I must, however, say here that our study in 2017 showed us that the poor households that had, that had access to microcredit or bank credit had the higher coping abilities. So they build more resilience. So that is, that is why access to finance appears to be very important strategy. Now what are the uh, constraints? As I showed you the evidence from ADB that there is, despite the force from the government of Bangladesh and other stakeholders, funding gap is still exist, that is. Second thing, that transfer of risk is a major solution, one of the major solution, and that we find from the evidences from developed and other developing countries, but in Bangladesh, insurance penetration is low. Therefore, the effectiveness of insurance in disaster risk management financing loss and damages 
becomes limited, but that is a constraint. Third is limited private-public collaboration in disaster management. The chief guest was telling me while sitting there that he was meant, he remarked that disaster is no longer a public sector, public goods. It is equally private goods, and this is not a public sector buzzword. This has become the buzzword for the whole nation, you know, too. And I'm so happy to see that the CCI has been making, taking this leadership and initiative in, in discourse on disaster risk management. So financing, let me come down to this financing issue. First thing that I have already mentioned that you need to optimize risk financing. So the way, two ways you can do it, one that you minimize the exposure to loss and damage. Second, you increase the resilience of the households, community, firms. So building that financial resilience of institutions and government support to cope with loss and damage. So first two approach that is related to minimizing exposure and increasing resilience related to prevention of disaster risk. And second one, last one is about post-disaster financial support to loss and damages. So strategies for minimizing risk, I'm almost at the end of my presentation. Some evidences su suggest, as I just mentioned a little while ago, that access to finance in pre-disaster period increases resilience of the household. That is true for poor households as well as the firms in private sector. Second, evidence suggests, I'm talking about the evidences from developed and developing countries from the literature that we find, that improving awareness is required awareness about the potential consequences of disaster is required. So that is important. Third, building the community infrastructure, like economic institutions, roads, roads, highways, etc., reduces intensity of loss and damages. One example is shelter house in our country, very, um, that reduces this. But important point that evidence suggests um, in Spain, I can mention that in Spain, disaster risk is com insurance is compulsory. That is absolutely cons compulsory, but that is the kind of strategy is required for a country like, but we have to figure out how best we can do it. But transfer of risk to different institutions like insurance companies reduces economic pressures or on affected households and firms. Then post-disaster financing strategies is quite simple, that you need to ensure flow of required fund for emergency aid and rehabilitation. All the efforts that government of Bangladesh in over these past, past decades, the, even equally in other developing countries, that um, emergency aid and re rehabilitation support was the major post-disaster financing strategies. It is equally true, but important point is challenges, inadequacy is the challenge. So best practices for diverse financial instruments, budgetary allocation and national fund, Development of disaster insurance market, the one that we mentioned that it is more or less absent, but it is well developed in European countries, uh, even in Brazil. So we need to seriously think about developing the disaster insurance market in Bangladesh, particularly on the role of agriculture property insurance. Then transfer of cash to the affected vulnerable households that is evidence the part of the best practices we find in Bangladesh also in a very recently during the corona time Bangladesh government also transferred cash to different poor households and supported supported the small and medium enterprises through their um, uh, incentive focused credit system 
So financial inclusion, one of the, whatever be the things, but everybody, every firm should be brought under financial inclusion. Then debt instruments are also available that we find in different countries. I'll talk about that. And private and public partnership in development of economic infrastructure. So these are the six best practices we find from the literature. So with strategies for financing disaster risk in Bangladesh, uh, preventive, first thing is in preventive and preparedness strategies that you increase disaster risk uh, related environmental literacy. People need to know about the consequences of disaster, environment related disaster. So there has to be in your environmental literacy, which has, over the past decade it has quite been extensive, but still people, not all people in all over the country know about environmental literacy. So that is one we need to increase. Second is insurance literacy, that penetration of insurance, insurance penetration is limited because of insurance literacy. So that we need to increase so that households and firms can transfer risks to the insurance companies. Build private and public partnership in infrastructure and in institutional development. This is also a very common practice globally, and I'm sure that private sector in this country can collaborate with government in building these institu institutions and infrastructure under different arrangements. Community level interventions for resilience can be accelerated through PKSF and microfinance institutions and other related organization. Financing strategy, pool resources from, now I'm talking more about how to establish this, pool resources from private and public sector through, I'm just suggesting what it should be, through fiscal intervention like tax and budgetary allocation. We may call this fund a national disaster fund. It, the reason that I'm titling this National, I am calling it National Disaster Fund because that draws the attention of the people. We have fund like Climate Resilience Fund, Green Fund, and so on, but that, as that funds have exposure to only limited. So, titling a fund as National Disaster Fund will draw the attention, and to ensure that individuals and private organizations contribute the contribution may be tax exempted so that they are in given this incentive to contribute and then make provision for cash transfer and contingency credit to the most challenging the one just I mentioned in Spain that disaster risk insurance is compulsory and I would like to see that um, although Bang Bangladesh has limited resources, insurance companies have limited resources, but through a partnership and the right strategies, something like you know subsidizing premium by the government, I can make this disaster risk insurance possible in this country. And insurance product may be diversified. That may include climate risk insurance, crop insurance, livestock insurance, property insurance, and so on. And IDRA should take required steps to expand disaster related insurance from the national on the basis of national priority banks and bangladesh bank has been bangladesh bank has been playing a very critical role in 2011 if i am not wrong they formulated a policy for financing uh, for or for sustainable finance and green finance and that banks have been prudently implementing that policies and i would expect that to continue at a larger scale. Uh, government should support MFIs to provide financial support. Uh, during this corona time, government provided this fund to PKSF and um, uh, NGOs under a stimulus package. The one I was talking about, the private-public partnership, sovereign bond may be issued, which is a common practice in 
Western countries in European countries to finance this consequences loss, sovereign bond may be issued with private and public partnership and that must be guaranteed by insurance company. This is a possible, um, so a way forward basically these strategies that uh, I have just mentioned that, uh, that is what I see as way forward, you know. So what will be my um, last con statement that disaster risk management finance need to be sorted out mostly through the market mechanism and private-public partnership. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Khalili. <clears throat> that was indeed a very long and detailed presentation. I didn't bother interrupting you because this is going to help us have the subsequent moderation. So you, you already fed a lot of talking points to the uh, panelists today. So let me just quickly move on. We have with us Mr. Nasiruddin, <coughs> the vice, vice chairman, Nasiruddin Ahmed, the first vice president of the Bangladesh Insurance Association. Um, just, I'll just pose a question and then if you wish, you can speak from here or you can um, go to the podium. Yes, sir. Uh, my question to you would be, you heard about this livestock insurance, climate risk insurance, crop insurance, you know. These are the products that uh, are already uh, used in various other countries, as we heard from the keynote but how we can, uh, you know, the disaster risk reduction, how insurance companies can play a vital role to engage the private sector to come into these kind of initiatives. Mr. Nasiruddin Ahmed is the uh, vice president of the Bangladesh Insurance Association and also the vice chairman of Magna Life Insurance Company Limited. Honorable Chief Guest of today's session, uh, MD Nazibur Rahman, Chairman, Capital Market Stabilization Fund, and a very successful uh, former NBA Chairman, uh, and our, our my fellow uh, discussant with me, KM Milat. General Manager, Sustainable Finance Department, Bangladesh Bank. Uh, Mr. Mohammad Arfan Ali, President and Managing Director, Bank Asia. And uh, uh, today's moderator. Uh, very young President of DCCI, Mr. Rizawan, Rizawan, Rizawan Rahman. Rizwan Rahman. So I'll uh, give uh, my speech and my uh, all the thing in very short way and I'll make it in English and Bengali together because I see here most of the people I will love to see in Bengali and English together. Uh, first I want to tell one thing that if you think Bangladesh population is number number eight in this world. That is officially uh, 16 crore, 14 lakh. If I compare Bangladesh with Samoa, it's a very small island. Their population is 1 lakh 98,000. So if any earthquake happened in Bangladesh and Samoa in the same time, with the magnitude of seven. So what will happen in Bangladesh and what will happen in Samoa? A lot of people will be die in Bangladesh and a lot of property will be damaged. And Bangladesh is in a very, uh, a very risk on strong and moderate earthquake zone. Should we think of it? So, Bhumi Kampar Bishwataka Amadar Mathai Nita Habe. Jodhiyo Bhumi Kampo kintu once in a century hoi. But it is very disastrous. Amadar BIA theke bar bar postap kora hoye chilo je je shakol bhabon high rise building tadar onto to insurance ta earthquake abong fire kora hok. Mandatory to aisho insurance shop deshe aachi. But mandatory hok aathoba uchik hok egulo ke cover out otherwise 
যে পরিমাণ ক্ষয়ক্ষতি বাংলাদেশের হবে সেটা বাংলাদেশ গভর্নমেন্ট তার হয়তো বা টেন পারসেন্টও বিয়ার করতে পারবে না সেকেন্ড পয়েন্ট ইজ দিস আই ওয়াজ টকিং উইথ মাই ফেলো কলিক জাস্ট ফিউ মিনিটস এ গো যে আমাদের দেশে একসময় ফ্যাক্টরিগুলো যখন ইন্স্যুরেন্স করা হতো দোকানপাট ইন্স্যুরেন্স করা হতো দ্যাট টাইম ফায়ার ইন্স্যুরেন্সের সাথে কিন্তু ফ্লাড সাইক্লোন ম্যান্ডেটারি নেওয়া হতো বাট রিসেন্টলি ব্যাংকিং পলিসি ইজ দিস এনি ফাইন্যান্সে শুধুমাত্র ফায়ার ইন্স্যুরেন্স কাভার করলেই চলবে দ্যাট মিন্স দ্য থিং ইজ দিস ব্যবসায়ীরা স্বচ্ছায় স্বেচ্ছায় হয়তো ফ্লাড ইন্স্যুরেন্স নিতে পারে সাইক্লোন অথবা নাও নিতে পারে বাট বাংলাদেশের মানুষের যে শিক্ষার হার অথবা আমরা যেভাবে ইন্স্যুরেন্স কোম্পানি আমি ফুললি অ্যাগ্রি উইথ ইউ সেভাবে প্যানিটেড হতে পারিনি সেক্ষেত্রে আমার মনে হয় যে আমরা তো চিন্তা করতে পারি অন্তত ঝুঁকিপূর্ণ সাইক্লোন এবং ফ্লাড এরিয়াগুলোতে যেন যদি ব্যাংক ফাইন্যান্সিং থাকে তাহলে ফ্লাড এবং সাইক্লোন বাধ্যতামূলক করা হয় অ্যানাদার থিং ইজ দিস আমি কয়েকটা পয়েন্ট বলি আমার বক্তব্য শেষ করব মোস্ট অফ দ্য কেসেস ইন বাংলাদেশ লাস্ট কয়েকটা ডিজাস্টারে দেখা গেছে যে মানুষের মৃত্যু কম হয়েছে বাট সম্পদের যে ক্ষয়ক্ষতি সেটা ঠেকানো যায় না স্পেশালি দ্য প্রপার্টি ড্যামেজ সো এই সাধারণ প্রান্তিক মানুষগুলোর যখন ঘর ভেঙে যায় রিসেন্টলি আমরা টিভিতেও দেখেছি যে রিভার্স স্লাইডিংয়ের কারণে মানে বিল্ডিং ভেঙে যাচ্ছে সো দ্যাট ইজ নট নট দ্যাট ইজ নট and uh, insured so my suggestion is this we those property gulo te insurance company gulo amra aro egi ashte hobe awareness build up korte hobe uh, mandatory hok or nai hok chegula ke insurance er aotay ni ashte hobe agriculture insurance already we started shadomaya corporation shoh few companies in bangladesh Uh, we already started in some area te eta suvidha manush prishokra pacche but the difference is it is in bangladesh and parshoporti desh india te jeta holo they have a separate agricultural insurance company in national level yearly premium income is 73 million uh, us dollar so that is profitable there বাট আমাদের এখানে যেহেতু আমরা লো স্কেলে করছি সো ইটস ভেরি ডিফিকাল্ট টু মেক প্রফিট সো উই নিড গভর্নমেন্ট সাবসিডি ইনিশিয়ালি বাট আফটার সাম টাইম বিকজ ইন্স্যুরেন্স থিওরি স্যার ভালো আছেন ভালো বলতে পারবেন ইফ ইউ ইনশিওর অনলি সোনারগা হোটেল দ্য প্রিমিয়াম উইল বি হাই ইফ ইউ ইনশিওর ফাইভ ফাইভ স্টার হোটেল ইন ঢাকা সিটি ইট উইল বি মাচ লোয়ার টু অল টেন so if you cannot increase the number of coverage we cannot reduce the premium we cannot reduce our losses one example i want to say is very important for us that is what happened in asia 2011 in thailand that was the biggest loss we face in this region that is a huge flood loss that is equivalent to 18 billion us dollar and the most of the the losses is paid by european insurance reinsurance companies so if we take covers and reinsure with as a catastrophic insurance to foreign reinsurer we can get easily out of this financial risk management issue uh i will fully agree with sir baki billa sir baki baki khalili sir i know him also before some areas i fully agree with you most of the agrees and he it was a detailed presentation yesterday night i see this i totally read this i'll make it very short in very few minutes uh my some proposal not related to insurance one is this uh regarding today's we see a, taken by very uh, very uh, amazing step by dcci this is the first 
emergency center, private sector in Southeast Asia. My suggestion is, please, if possible, tag this center to our regulatory office, ITRA. Make a connection with us through ITRA so that our regulator can know what is happening here and also insurance company will know through IDRA what they should have to do. Another suggestion is this. It's very difficult one. Maybe it's uh, maybe my, my overthinking. Can we raise a fund for our future climate risk? in private sector. But because what we see when any calamity happen, we go to the PM office and give checks. But we can we make a fund for private sector before the calamity happen? This is one thing is maybe I'm, I'm overthinking. Another thing is that is called all over the world is uh, also disaster but we don't mention here, that is a big terrorist attack or any riot happen in a country because we are very close to some, some areas in these issues. So we should also think if any big terrorist attack happen and riot happen in this region, what should we do? Insurance company has to go a long way. I fully agree with you. We need more climate related product, especially what happened. Recently, I'm telling you one example. Few insurance company develop a product for mango because mango is a good fruit for our country. Also, sometimes we export. So for mango, we develop a product for insurance. In India, there's a insurance for potato, for rubber, and this way. So we have to think different innovative, way, innovative ways. So I am another thing I just want, not want to miss that is <coughs> usually sadhan to amra jokhon dekhi jokhon upu kole shotor ko barta hai, taakhon je no jan gulo thake ba maaz thorar dollar gulo thake, she gulo kintu insurance kora thake na. To amader ke odigyo chinta korte hobe. কারণ হয়তো ওই মানুষটার জন্য ওই ওই টলার টুকেই তার সম্বল আমাদের দেশে পাটুরিয়াতে মানে এই বিয়ে থেকেও মানুষ ওই সরি গাড়ি বোধ হয় ফেরি থেকে পড়েও ইন্স্যুরেন্স করা ছিল না সো সেখানে ক্ষতিগ্রস্ত হয়েছে সো উই হ্যাভ টু মোর অ্যাডভার্টাইজ মোর অ্যাওয়ারনেস বিল্ড আপ অ্যান্ড উই হ্যাভ টু মেক ইট ইন এ ওয়ে দ্যাট দ্য হোল কান্ট্রি whole nation and government should get help from insurance. Uh, I think I have touched few points. It's a very small session. In future, if I have any chances to talk, I'll prepare more for that. And I also again thanking, thanking DCCI, also our very young and energetic president, he has taken a remarkable step today. He has, I don't know what the future of this step, but I know this step is a big step today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your vote of confidence in Dhaka Chamber. This is not a big step, it is not a small step, but it is the first step to many other steps that the private sector will take in the future. At this point of time, we have with us a uh, very seasoned banker among us. We have with us Mr. Mohammad Arfan Ali, the President and Managing Director of Bank Asia Limited, who of course, needless to mention, is having a vast experience in the banking sector. And I would like to humbly request you to share your views on diverse range on the financing that is required for a sustainable disaster management. And also how a suitable banking-led strategy, financing-led strategy can be followed. Thank you, dear moderator, Mr. Rizwan Rahman. Assalamu alaikum. 
and very good afternoon. Today's chief guest, Mr. Mohammad Nujib Rahman, Chairman, Capital Market Stabilization Fund, and former Principal Secretary to the Government and Chairman of NBR. Today's keynote speaker, Mr. M. A. Baki Khalili, Professor and Dean, Department of Business Administration, University of Asia Pacific, and he also chairs the Risk Management Committee of Bank Asia. Mr. Mr. K. M. Milla, General Manager, Sustainable Finance Department, as a panelist, and we have also with us Mr. Nasiruddin Ahmed Pavel, Vice, first Vice President of Bangladesh Insurance Association and Vice Chairman Meghna Life Insurance Limited, distinguished guests. Uh, when we talk about financing and financial inclusion, we talk about building resilience as well. As a uh, bank, the private sector, especially private sector bank, generally the concentration is in the urban areas and we talk about big business. We talk about financing big corporates. But to the context of this country, especially when we learn from the paper presenter that we are the seventh riskiest country in the world in terms of disaster, natural disaster, rising sea, and other disasters like earthquake, cyclones. It is very important to take a preparation and one of the steps, five steps, two steps relates to banking services. So building resilience through bank account is very important. So we need to give those people living in the rural areas, to the vulnerable areas, the bank account they need to save money and to transfer money in terms of when they face the disaster, when they face some of the calamities in their life. So there are two parts here. First, pre-financing. We do not wait for that some disaster will happen and we'll give money to them. It should be a precondition that we give the bank account to them so they can manage their finance themselves, they can build resilience by themselves, as well as the banks, financial institution, government can help them to get advanced in financial literacy, financial management. Then second step comes about the financial transfer and a special credit transfer when it is required after the disaster happens. In Bangladesh, as we know, 50% of the population still do not have bank account. And in the rural areas, it is 70%. We pioneered SN banking in this country to include those people, vulnerable people, in the rural areas all over Bangladesh. And now 29 banks are working. And this model has proved very efficient for including the marginal and unbanked people to the banking system. We have operation in Sundarbans. We have operation in Satkhira. We have operations in uh, uh, remote areas, chore areas of the country. So financial inclusion is, as we call that, it is the sixth fundamental right. Without money, Without having good access to credit, we cannot do anything sustainable. As people become poorer, they become vulnerable. 
it is not the problem of the people concerned. It is the problem of the system. It is the problem of the bankers. It is the problem of the government that we are not doing enough for the people in the marginal level. So it is our duty to go ahead with the agenda of financial inclusion as government is also uh, government also advancing with the fin national financial inclusion strategy where by 2026 every citizen of the country will have a bank account that is very important development happening here at this moment we have also some experience with uh, disaster funding we worked with German Red Crescent Society in the Hatia Deep, where we transferred money to the people who were affected by the cyclones. We have experience with UNDP. We transferred money to the marginal people during COVID. We have experience with Rohingya people. We have transferred money to the homeless people who migrated from Burma. So the private sector engagement, especially the banks, it is possible to make it more effective and let all the banks come together for this rescue. Private-public partnership is very important. I always mention here is the high ex-government official and now also in a very important job is there. The mistrust and distrust between the government and private sector is the major thing that hinders the progress and building partnership. We as a private operator always feel that we cannot earn enough trust from the government that we can also do something better. We can do many things that can resolve the issue of the society. In today's world, no business will survive until it explains that the very existence of this, bus this business is to solve some problem, to do some betterment of the society. The market will force us to do that. The government needs to create that environment that the equal level playing field is there and the institutions in the private level can play the role as well. So in banking service, we are happy that 61 banks are working together for the development of this country. And we believe this competitive market will force the banks to be, behave properly and rightly. Otherwise, they cannot survive in this competitive market. And as there, there are some proposals from one panel discussion that we can create disaster management fund. As banks are also donating money for different charitable purpose, sustainable works. Yes, there can be some fund, emergency fund, that can help the people in the coastal areas, people in the vulnerable areas to get access to this fund at a lower cost, lower interest rate, so they can build their future. Basically, Giving money to somebody will not solve the problem. Financial literacy and making them able is very important. As we have worked long 30 years, especially I myself have a career of 31 years in banking, we understand that making somebody, I mean, resilient by teaching them financial literacy, making them financially literate, making them responsible uh, user of financial services can be better rewarding than giving money to somebody. So we can 
work together for the better society, for the better future. As we see from the paper, that 37% of the affected people never come to the same life again. I mean, the suffering prolong, is prolonged. One economist was telling that the crisis, the price hike is not the problem. The problem is, do you have money to buy it? Are you able to, your purchasing power is very important. So if we can create that power, that can resolve the most problems we face today. So as a bank, as a part of the financial system, we can commit that we'll work together with the government, with different organizations as we work past, that we can build a more resilient society for future. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I truly believe that uh, private sector friendly uh, strategic financing policies will definitely urge the private sector to come forward. Uh, you'd rightly said uh, when the, um, um, supporting financially will not only uh, solve the problems of disaster, because money doesn't stop a disaster, it is rather the uh, disaster uh, readiness of the uh, private sector as well as the pri uh, public sector, which we have seen during our uh, Rana Plaza tragedy. We had a lot of resources, a lot of money, but not enough uh, uh, resources to actually stop the situation from getting worse. Uh, we did not take the proper initiatives. We have seen this during this, uh, the fire in the uh, Bashindara shopping mall, where our fire brigade was not able to um, go above the uh, 12th story. But the other day, we did a test run from the same private sector emergency operations center in front of the minister, where we brought in these, uh, the electromechanic ladders, which can go up to 24 or 26 stories. And 20 more of these machines have been brought by the government. So again, government is taking the initiative at the same time, the private sector, which is, I repeatedly say, 85% contributor to the national, uh, national growth, they should also take their initiatives. So uh, thank you, Mr. Afan Ali, for your uh, valuable suggestions. And just for the information of our guests and, of course, our chief guest and the respective panelists, that every time we have a discussion like this, we actually eventually form an outcome report. We place it to the chief guest as well as the respective, uh, respective uh, policymakers. All the persons concerned, whether it is the Ministry of Finance, whether it is the Ministry of uh, uh, any other Ministry of Ministry of Commerce or even the Ministry of Disaster Management and Relief. So at this point, uh, we would like to hear from the private sector. I'm very happy, actually, because I was slightly worried that our uh, general manager of the Sustainable Finance Department of Bangladesh Bank, he wasn't able to join us because he had a very important meeting at the Bangladesh Bank. But however, he made his effort. He, uh, he managed to show in, up in time right before his speech. So thank you, sir for joining us despite your busy schedule. Now, my, I have only solely one question to you. It's just a, how can Bangladesh Bank work in institutionalizing this uh, financing in disaster risk? You know, at the end of the day, private sector will do its part, but how is Bangladesh Bank going to institutionalize it? And the only reason we say it is because for further private sector involvement in these kind of disaster risk management. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. K. M. Milad, General Manager, Bangladesh Bank. Thank, uh, thank you, uh, Honorable Moderator, Chair, uh, today's uh, Honorable Chief Guest of this uh, event, uh, the keynote speaker, panel discussants, and in front, my colleagues, uh, my friends, and uh, ladies and gentlemen, a very good afternoon to you all. Uh, in fact, Bangladesh Bank, uh, the Central Bank of Bangladesh, has been so passionate since 2008 onwards. Because once you see the mainstreaming corporate social responsibility activities, that's very circular was issued in the year 2008. And the corporate social responsibility activities for the banks and financial institutions to address the distressed, helpless community investment, the disaster management. And uh, the moderator, the chair, he was telling, talking about the Rana Plaza disaster. You see, the once the Rana Plaza, it was say, it's a six or seven story building. And you see that there had been credit risk assessment 
that was very much there. And if you look at the fourth or fifth floor, the garments or textile, whatever it was there, all the credit risk assessment has been assessed. But still, the environmental and social risk assessment from that perspective were not addressed. You see that credit risk management, the credit risk management means the workforce, the management competence, the supply risk, the uh, what is there, the building, everything was fine. But the building code, there is a problem in the building. So it was not addressed. So when it collapsed, and also the disaster came out that the topmost authority said that if you don't work for the day, it was a symbol that, that was, a, that was a alarming, that it might fall down, it could be a real disaster. But it was said that the labor force has to work all the day, otherwise they will not going to have their wages. So it was, that was the very mindset of the topmost authority. So once we talk about disaster management, once we talk about green management, the leadership should be a green one. It should be green governance. The leadership is very important. Once we see our honorable prime minister, he is green-minded, inclination is there. Our governor, honorable governor, minister of finance, but once we see uh, that the green governance of the banking industry, all the banks are not going in the same pace. Where the board management are very much inclined, their middle, middle layer and lower management are very comfortable to run with, to fight with, to go with the green banking policy and the disaster management. Bangladesh Bank, uh, since 2011, a policy guidelines for green banking, it was uh, issued for the banks and financial institutions. Then thereafter, environmental risk management, it came out on 30th January 2011. Then a very comprehensive environmental and social risk management that was issued in the year December 2017. And all the banks and financial institutions are, they have the mandatory agenda to go with that. What is the benefit of that? That is the Asset, that is the portfolio disbursement, is not that much important. Yes, the banks are ready to uh, increase their assets. But most importantly, whether those assets are quality assets or not, on, or not over the period of time. You see, the loans, the industry average of the asset quality of banks and financial institutions is around 8 to 9 percent or like that. But once you see the assets, those went through environmental and social due diligence. I'm telling, talking about the six years statistics, it is below 1%. The non-performing loan status is below 1% when the loans went through environmental and social. I'm telling, talking about the last six years. Then if we talk about the green products, projects, initiatives, loans, those went through ESDD the percentage is very negligible. It is 0.2%. So environmental, social, and governance, due diligence, it is very, very important, and now banks are much more motivated to go with that. Actually, when we talk about access to finance, we see that what is the major problem in the banks and financial institutions to avail the finance? Access to finance is a major problem. I am not agreed to, uh, to accept that. Because access to finance is not a major problem. The major problem is the mindset. The major problem is the very attitude. The major problem is the most communication, information gap. We have so many things in the supply side. And even we don't know how to utilize the 50% of those supply uh, things are there because we are not we are not aware of those things. So so communication gap, information gap is a major challenge. Then also green governance, the leadership, that is also a major problem. like Ministry of Finance, Ministry of Industry, then Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change, then Bangladesh Bank, Bangladesh Security Exchange Commission, IDRA. 
and certainly banks are financial institutions, they are the players. So everybody has to be under the same umbrella to contribute in such a manner that it should be an all-round cricket, it should be a total football approach. In that case, there will be no communication information gap and the access to finance will then never be realized as a major problem. That is, uh, that is one. Then in sort of uh, communication, there should be MIS. That should be a dedicated database for the potential clients, for the, uh, for the manufacturers, respective manufacturers, uh, su supply, suppliers, service providers, and then banks and financial institutions will be among them to breezing the supply and demand side uh, uh, blending. There should be an investment of the blended investment, like it should be the, it should be the public private investment. When you talk about the sustainable finance policy that has been already uh, said that in December 2020, we have a sustainable finance policy where sustainable taxonomy, green taxonomy, green taxonomy is much more detailed in the Bangladesh Bank sustainable finance policy than the European Union they have issued. It's much more detailed and strengthened. Then when you see the sustainable finance policy, it is very much unique on the globe. So what I'm telling you about that because it is they are the greening the polluting industries, not only the greening the mind, but greening the polluting industries. Once you see the, uh, the uh, tra traditional fixed chimney cleans, those are now stopped forcibly. But you see the tunnel clean, most environment friendly. You see the hybrid Hoffman clean, less environment friendly. But once you see the policy of the two institutions, like the Department of Environment under the uh, Forest Environment Climate Change, they are saying that no burn bricks will move on after 2025. So that is the DOE uh, program. But once we see the Minister of Industry, under the same country, the another ministry said that Minister of Industry has declared tunnel clean and hybrid open clean as industry. So what will bank do? Bank will finance for eight to 10 years. So it will go up to 2030. And tunnel clean is burn big, but most environment friendly. The, all the films are being absorbed within the very system. So once it is there, it's the bankable project and it will run up to 2030. But when the policy is there, that no burn brick will run on uh, after 2025. Again, the Minister of Industry said that these are the two products belong to industry. Then what will banks do? What will the investors do? So these are the policy intervention. These policy need to be green. So green policy intervention for the sustainability of the green projects, projects initiatives. As many as there are 68 green products, projects, initiatives belong to 11 green categories that you can find in the sustainable finance policy. And also there is talk about green bond. When you talk about green bond for the capital market infrastructure development, then the Bangladesh Securities Exchange Commission, Bangladesh Bank, other ministries, all the ministries, they need to be under the same umbrella. So what Bangladesh Bank is thinking, there is the advisory committee that is for the policy Green finance taxonomy policy for green bond, it's being under preparation, sir. So it is uh, under the chair and hopefully within the July there will be a green bond, a green finance taxonomy for green bond for the banks and financial institutions. At least to some extent, uh, to some extent banks and financial institutions of the Bangladesh Security Exchange Commission. So what I will tell about the communication gap, information gap is the major problem. Green governance, there should be adequate green governance. The capacity building should be A to Z for all the concerned personalities. And also there should be cooperation, collaboration among all the concerned states that is badly required. When you talk about finance, then we would say that finance, this is not a sufficient condition. Is it a sustainable finance? Still, we can say that is a sufficient condition made up. Then if you say that it is green finance, still it's not a sufficient condition. If we talk about inclusive green finance, yes, it is there, but the asset inclusion and the end fees, I would say that the people under this umbrella, they are very much vulnerable. So when you talk about the seashore people, we, see, we should see that there is a sandwich panel 
there is a was funding arrangement of bangladesh bank where the where the sandwich panels are there so those vulnerable people can read off of their disaster if they can go with these sandwich panels if we talk about green building it is for the corporates it is for the rich people if we talk about the green industry to some extent it is being addressed for the uh, uh, inclusive green finance but when we talk about the green housing it's a 30 story building sir and in all the buildings there could be 20 30 units so if it is there then it can address the lower and middle class group at the one at the one time it is environment friendly at the other side it is inclusive and it is the green inclusive finance for this so there is many more talk and it will take the kill the very time and we are we are not in such a forum that i can talk about next seven days so it's not possible so so i i i would stop here i i wish all the very best i see that the mindset is important and the collaborative and cooperative coordination is much more required and certainly we are we are the victim of circumstances so both nationally and internationally coordination cooperation is badly required so we should live not only for ourselves we should live for others so go green live green and live for others thank you very much for giving me a very very patient time thank you all thank you thank you mr k milad in fact it was uh, almost like another keynote to understand the uh, strategies behind uh, Bangladesh Bank trying to promote policy-friendly uh, support. But as you rightly mentioned, that there is a lot of uh, intervention required from the government itself, like the Minister of Industries and so on. So definitely, before we reach out to them uh, regarding this outcome paper that I just mentioned to you, we will show you a draft of our proposals. And just to make sure that um, both the Bangladesh Bank's voice as well as the private sector's requirements are heard. So before moving on to our chief guest, I would like to um, open the floor briefly with the permission of the chair, uh, with the chief guest. If you have any questions, I will ask you to ask me to 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 ask me to ask you to ask me 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 লজ্জার কিছু না এটা অস্বীকার করার কিছু নয় আমি আজকে অনেক কিছু শিখলাম জানলাম এখানে আমি নিজেই শিখলাম আমি মডারেটার আমি নিজেই জানি না অনেক কিছু আজকে প্রেজেন্টেশন থেকে এক ধরনের কথা আসলো আমাদের ফাইন্যান্সিয়াল সেক্টর থেকে আরেক ধরনের কথা আসলো আমাদের রেগুলেটর যে সেন্ট্রাল ব্যাংক যে তারা আমাদেরকে কিছু ধরনের কিছু রেকমেন্ডেশন দিলেন সো মাই আই উড লাইক টু ওপেন দ্য ফ্লোর আপনাদের কারো যদি কোনো ধরনের কিছু জানার কিছু থাকে আপনারা অবশ্যই ইউ ক্যান রেজ ইউ হ্যান্ডস অ্যান্ড মাইক উইল রিচ ইউ আপনাদের কারো যদি বা কোনো এখানে যদি কোনো প্রশ্ন আপনাদের থাকে ইজ দেয়ার এনিবডি অন দ্য ফ্লোর একটু পরিচয়টা দিয়ে তারপরে আপনি বলেন আসসালামু আলাইকুম আমি কাশ্মীর রেজা আমি হাওর নিয়ে কাজ করি হাওর অঞ্চল থেকে পরিবেশ ও হাওর উন্নয়ন সংস্থার আমি সভাপতি হিসেবে আছি আজকের আয়োজনটা খুব প্রাসঙ্গিক ধন্যবাদ জানাচ্ছি যে বিষয়গুলো আমি একটু বলতে চাচ্ছি যে আমরা একটু রিমোট এরিয়াতে কাজ করি মনে করেন আমি সুনামগঞ্জের একটা হাওড়ে কাজ করি যখন দেখা যায় যে ন্যাচারাল ক্যালামিটিস লাইক ফ্ল্যাশ ফ্লাড হয় নর্মালি হাওড় এরিয়াতে তো এই সিভিও যারা আছে তারা যে কর্পোরেট হাউসের সাথে বা গভর্নমেন্টের সাথে যে যোগাযোগ করা সেইখানে আমার মনে হচ্ছে একটা গ্যাপ আছে যেটা কমিউনিকেশন গ্যাপের কথা আমার আগের বক্তা যিনি বলে গেছেন তো এই গ্যাপটা কিভাবে রিডিউস করা যায় আরেকটা জিনিস আমি দেখি যে আমরা যে সময় এই ডিজাস্টারগুলো নিয়ে কথা বলি তখন ওই যে হাওড়ের যে ডিজাস্টার সেটা কেমন যেন আমার কাছে মনে হয়েছে যে প্রপারলি অ্যাড্রেস হয় না যেমন আজকেও যে আলোচনা বা কিনোট স্পিকার আলোচনা খুব সমৃদ্ধ একটা বিষয় ছিল কিন্তু দু হাজার সতেরো সালে যে হাওড়ে ফ্ল্যাশ ফ্ল্যাট হয়েছে ফোর হান্ড্রেড মিলিয়ন ডলারের চেয়েও বেশি ক্ষতি হয়েছিল সো এরপরে এই যে দু হাজার সাল থেকে এখন দু হাজার বাইশ সাল পর্যন্ত এই বাইশ বছরে হাওড়ে অন্তত নয়বার আমরা ফসল হানির সম্মুখীন হয়েছি সো এ থেকে বের হয়ে আসার আমাদের একটা সাস্টেনেবল সলিউশন বের করা দরকার এবং হাওড়ে আমি মনে করি অল্টারনেটিভ সোর্স অফ আর্নিং দরকার সো কিভাবে এই গ্যাপগুলো আমরা রিডিউস করতে পারি স্পেশালি কর্পোরেট হাউস বা গভর্নমেন্টের সাথে সিভিও গুলো যে কমিউনিকেশন গ্যাপ কীভাবে রিডিউস করাটায় সেটা জানতে চাচ্ছি ধন্যবাদ 
আপনাকে ধন্যবাদ আমি কুইকলি আপনাকে যেগুলো আমার জানা আছে আমি বলি যেগুলো আমি আজকে এখানে আলোচনায় অনেক কিছু আলোচনা হয় একটা হলো যে ওই পাবলিক প্রাইভেট মডালিটি যেটা আছে যে বেসরকারি খাতকে এগিয়ে আসতে হবে সরকারি খাতের সাথে পাবলিক প্রাইভেট পার্টনারশিপ একটা করতে হবে আরেকটা হলো যে প্রাইভেট সেক্টর ইনিশিয়েটিভ যেটা বলছি আজকে ঢাকা চেম্বারে এই কাজটা কেন করলো টু ব্রেক দি আইস যে ঠিক আছে ঢাকা চেম্বার এই কাজটা করলো আমাদের যে একটা সুপার কনসোটিয়াম যেখানে আপনারা জানেন যে অ্যাকশন এইড ওয়ার্ল্ড মিশন ইউনাইটেড পারপাস এবং ইউরোপিয়ান ইউনিয়ন সহ আমার সবাই এবং ঢাকা চেম্বার ইজ দ্য প্রাইভেট সেক্টর ট্রেড অর্গানাইজেশন এবং একটা সুপরিচিত ট্রেড অর্গানাইজেশন তো তারা এই কাজটা করলো টু শো যে দিস ইজ অলসো পার্ট অফ দ্য প্রাইভেট সেক্টর রেসপন্সিবিলিটি এখন আমি আশাবাদী যে আমাদেরকে দেখে আজকে অন্যান্য অ্যাসোসিয়েশন আছে অন্যান্য চেম্বার আছে এই দেশে অনেকগুলো চেম্বার এগুলো আছে তারাও কিন্তু এখানে এগিয়ে আসতে পারে এবং আমার এখন দায়িত্ব হবে আমাদের যে আমরা যে একটা সাড়ে চার হাজার পরিবারের যে আজকে চেম্বার চার হাজার পাঁচশো এস এমের যে চেম্বার আমরা আমাদের প্রাইভেট সেক্টরে যারা আছে তাদেরকে আমরা এঙ্গেজ করব যে আসেন আপনারা চলে আসেন এই যে ভলেন্টিয়ার হিসাবে এখানে তা এছাড়া তারপরে আমাদের বিজনেস হাউস যেগুলো আছে আমাদের মধ্যে শুধু এস না রাজ কর্পোরেশনও আছে রাজ কর্পোরেশন আছে যারা তিরিশ হাজার চল্লিশ হাজার কর্মচারীর এমপ্লয়মেন্ট জেনারেট করে তাদের নিজস্ব অফিসে এই ধরনের একটা এমার্জেন্সি অপারেশন সেন্টার থাকা উচিত যেটা আমাদের এনইউসি ন্যাশনাল এমার্জেন্সি অপারেশন সেন্টার থাকা উচিত আর এছাড়া কিছু প্রশ্ন আপনি করেছেন আমি দেখেছি আজকে এখানে আমাদের প্রধান অতিথি একটা স্পিচ নিয়ে এসছেন কিন্তু ওইগুলো সব কেটে উনি কিন্তু আপনাদের সবার কথা নোট করছে এখানে তার মানে উনি আজকে স্পিচটা পড়বেন না উনি আপনাদেরকে সরাসরি অ্যাড্রেস করবেন এখানে আমি ইজ দ্যার এনিবডি আর কোনো কি প্রশ্ন জি বলেন আমি মোহাম্মদ জমশন আলী বলছিলাম আমি মানে লুব্রিকেন্টস এবং কেমিক্যাল ইনপোর্ট করি আমার কোম্পানি এশিয়ান পেট টু কেমিক্যালস লিমিটেড যে আমি কথাগুলো বাংলায় বলতেছি আমি সর্বপ্রথম ধন্যবাদ জানাচ্ছি ঢাকা চেম্বারকে যারা সুন্দর একটা আজকে এই সেমিনার আয়োজন করার জন্য এবং ধন্যবাদ জানাচ্ছি অনুপ্রাণিষ্টকে যারা আজকে সুন্দর সুন্দর আমাদের মাঝে তারা তাদের মূল্যবান কথাগুলো আমাদের মাঝে আজকে তুলে ধরেছেন তো আমি একটু কথা বলতে চাই যে দুর্যোগ ব্যবস্থাপনা যেমন দেখা যাচ্ছে যে ফায়ার প্লাস আপনাদের ভূমিকম্প হয় যেটা ভূমিকম্প হয় এবং যেখানে বাড়ি ঘরে আগুন লাগে এবং একজন বললো যে রানা পেলা যা যে কারণে হয়েছে তো আমি বল আমি সর্বপ্রথম বলবো যে ওই আপনার দেখা যাচ্ছে যে এই কলকাতাতেই আমি বলি আমাদের পাশে দেশ ইন্ডিয়া কলকাতাতে কিন্তু অনেক অনেক পুরানো বিল্ডিং অনেক অনেক আপনারা গেলে দেখতে পাচ্ছেন অনেক অনেক পুরানো বিল্ডিং কিন্তু তারা করে রাখছে এগুলো কিন্তু এখনও ভাঙতে পারে নাই দেখা যাচ্ছে যে কেন ভাঙে না সেটা হয়তো আপনারা জানেন যে ওইখানে রাস্তার কারণে দেখা যাচ্ছে এখন একটা বিল্ডিং পাঁচতলা ওইখানে হয়ে গেছে অলরেডি আরও বিশ বছর আগের করা অনেক পুরানো বিল্ডিং দেখা যাচ্ছে পঞ্চাশ বছর আগের করা কিন্তু এগুলো ভাঙতেছে না কেন জানেন এটা বাংলায় কিন্তু দেখা যাচ্ছে এটা একতলা বিল্ডিং হয়ে যাবে কারণ তারা এখন পাঁচতলা বিল্ডিং আছে এটা বাংলায় একতলা হয়ে যাবে কারণ দুইতলা হয়ে যাবে এর কারণ হইলো ওইখানে দেখা যাচ্ছে যে একটা আইন আছে একটা আইন বলতে যার বাড়ির সামনে রাস্তা ছয় ফিট সে একতলা বিল্ডিং করতে পারবে যার বাড়ির সামনে রাস্তা দশ ফিট সে দুতলা করতে পারবে এবং বিশ ফিটের উপরে সে তিনতলা করতে পারবে তো এটার কারণে কিন্তু তারা মানে এই আইনটা কিন্তু তাদের এখানে কলকাতায় অনেক ভালো হবে এটা কিন্তু তারা মেনে চলে কিন্তু আমাদের বাংলাদেশে এই আইনগুলো কিন্তু আমরা মানতেছি না এই না মানার কারণে কিন্তু এই যে আগুন লাগলে ভূমিকম্প হলে আমরা কিন্তু সাথে সাথে যেতে যেতে পারি না এবং এটা কিন্তু আমরা এই মানে ক্ষতি আমাদের যে ক্ষতিরা যদি আমরা তাড়াতাড়ি যেতে পারতাম আমাদের কিন্তু ক্ষতিটা অনেক কম হতো কিন্তু এর কারণে আমরা না যেতে পার পারার কারণে কিন্তু আমাদের অনেক ক্ষতিগ্রস্ত আমরা হচ্ছি তো এই এই ব্যাপারে যদি আপনারা কোনো সুনির্দিষ্ট কোনো ইয়া দিবেন যে আমাদের দেশে আইন আছে এই আইনটা যদি আমরা মানতে পারি তাহলে এটা মনে হয় আমাদের জন্য আরও অনেক বেটার পজিশন হবে থ্যাংক ইউ ধন্যবাদ আসসালামকুম আপনার অসংখ্য ধন্যবাদ আপনি বেশ কয়েক একটা গুরুত্বপূর্ণ কথা বলেছেন আমি এই পর্যায়ে এই এই দিকে সামনের সারিতে চলে আসেন আমি আর দুটো প্রশ্ন নিয়ে আমি শেষ করে দিব আমাদের আপনি জানেন যে আজকে সমাপন অনুষ্ঠান আছে বিকেল চারটার সময় বল মাইকটা অন করে দাও হ্যালো জি আসসালামু আলাইকুম ডিসিসিআই একটা বড় পরিবার সো আমরা যারা অন্টারপ্রেনার হিসেবে ডিসিসিআইয়ের সাথে আছি আমাদের পরিবারটাই অনেক বড় আর এখানে প্রাইভেট সেক্টরের যারা অন্টারপ্রেনারশিপ এবং যারা একদম প্রডিউসার লেভেলে আছে বা যারা ইন্ডাস্ট্রি লেভেলে আছে তাদের অনেক ধরনের ডিজাস্টার ম্যানেজমেন্ট করতে হয় তো প্রাইভেট সেক্টরে এই ডিজাস্টার ম্যানেজমেন্টে তো আমাদের চেম্বার অ্যাসোসিয়েশনগুলো তো অটোমেটিক এগিয়ে আসবে কিন্তু চেম্বারগুলোর পাশাপাশি যদি এ ধরনের আন্টারপ্রেনারদেরকে কি ধরনের ডিজাস্টার ম্যানেজমেন্টকে ফ্যাসিলিটি দেয়া যায় এটার জন্য যদি হচ্ছে প্রাইম মিনিস্টার অফিসের সাথে আমাদের চেম্বারের সাথে একটা লিঙ্ক করে দেয়া যায় এবং আমরা পরবর্তীতে যে
সো ওখানে যারা এগ্রিকালচার বিজনেসের সাথে আছে তারা নানান ধরনের প্রবলেম ফেস করছে তো এখন কিন্তু রিসার্চ বেস আমাদের বেশ কিছু কাজ করা দরকার যে কোথায় কখন কোন ধরনের ডিজাস্টারে আমাদের কি ধরনের ফ্যাসিলিটি দিতে হবে এবং সেই ফ্যাসিলিটিগুলো কিভাবে হবে এবং যারা ইন্স্যুরেন্সের সাথে কাজ করছেন সেই ইন্স্যুরেন্সের কিন্তু আমাদের অ্যাগ্রো বেসড বিজনেস বা যারা আমাদের ফার্মার লেভেলে আছে তাদের কিন্তু একেবারেই নলেজ নেই তো সেই নলেজ বেসটা বাড়ানোর জন্য ইন্স্যুরেন্স অ্যাসোসিয়েশনকেও আরও বেশি এগিয়ে আসতে হবে ডিজাস্টার ম্যানেজমেন্টের জন্য আর আমার লাস্ট পয়েন্ট হচ্ছে ফার্মার এবং ফিশারিজ নিয়ে যারা কাজ করছে যারা সমুদ্রে অনেক কষ্ট করে বিভিন্ন সময় মাছ ধরে আমাদেরকে এই বিজনেসের সাথে ইনভলভ করছে তো আমরা দেখছি যে আমরা তো অলরেডি ব্লু ইকোনমি নিয়ে কাজ করছি কিন্তু এখানে ডিজাস্টার প্রায় সময় হয়ে থাকে সমুদ্রে আমরা দেখি যে বিভিন্ন সময় কিন্তু ঝড়ের কবলে পড়ে তো তাদের কাছে কিভাবে আগে থেকেই আমরা কোন উপায়ে আসলে এই ডিজাস্টার রোধ করার জন্য তাদেরকে ইনফরমেশান দিতে পারি বা স্যাটেলাইটের মাধ্যমে বা তাদেরকে তাদের হাতে কোনো প্রযুক্তি দিয়ে দিতে পারি কি না এরকম আমরা আগে থেকেই রিসার্চ বেস কিছু করতে পারি কি না আমার মনে হয় যে আমাদের ইনোভেটিভ সেন্টার আছে যেখানে আমরা ঢাকা চেম্বার থেকে ইনোভেশান নিয়ে কাজ করছি পাশাপাশি আমরা আমাদের যে এস এম ই পরিবার যারা আছে যারা এই ইন্ডাস্ট্রিগুলোর সাথে যুক্ত আছে তাদের জন্য আমার মনে হয় যে এখন প্রাইভেট সেক্টর এবং পাবলিক সেক্টর মিলে তো আমরা গভর্নমেন্ট থেকেও কাজ করছি প্রাইভেট সেক্টরও কাজ করছি আমাদের এখন মনে হয় সময় এসছে যে সরাসরি আসলে আন্টারপ্রেনারদের নিডটা কি ডিজাস্টার তাদের কি ধরনের হয় এবং তাদেরকে কি ধরনের Thank you. Uh, we have the guest of honor of our next session, the closing session. The, interestingly, he is the uh, chair of the task force of uh, disaster and climate risk reduction of the UNS Cup. I mean, briefly, for selfish reasons, for our learning purposes, uh, regarding how the UNS Cup has been, because the UNS Cup is the uh, social commission for the Asia and the Pacific. So, APEC region, how Bangladesh can be uh, created as an example in the future for disaster risk reduction. I'm like to briefly from the task force chair, Mr.